Good morning, Monday morning, heading out to Tel Aviv for a marathon of back-to-back meetings with legends. No joke, meeting this morning with the CEO of Giving Way, a company I featured in the Jerusalem Post in my column this week, Orit is her name. After that, a meeting with Afrat Fenigsen, who's been on the vlog before. She was VP Marketing, I believe, of Aerobotics, the drone company. She's hands down one of the best marketers in the country. And then I'm meeting Ziv Elul, who's pretty much responsible in a major way for my career in tech. He was the first tech CEO to hire me seven years ago, eight years ago, something like that. And after that, I'm meeting Jamie Geller, who's a big blogger in the Jewish world. So back-to-back meetings all day with legends. Very excited about it. Let's do this. early enough to get parking. I love Serona. 20 minutes till my first meeting and then back to back for the rest of the day basically. Serona really is so unique. We have basically every single tech company in this building. Amazon, Facebook, everyone. We have these old school, traditional build- buildings that have been here forever. We have just beautiful trees and plants and green. Literally one of my favorite places here in Israel. Look how beautiful this is. This place, Serona, has pretty much everything and good coffee. Lemonade HQ. guys know there's there's a lot of fascinating people in the let's call it Israeli tech ecosystem but this story right here is a whole different level of unique so I write this Jerusalem Post weekly column as you guys know and Thursday morning I reached out to one of my favorite people just hands down one of the smartest people in Israeli tech an amazing investor an amazing entrepreneur just a person that I could learn from day in day out Gigi Levy look up Gigi Levy I, I don't even know how to start but He's a world-renowned expert on growing companies, specific, you know, expertise in marketplaces. Just an amazing individual, no ego, and my favorite person on email. He emails faster than me. I love the guy. And I reached out on Thursday morning. I'm like, Gigi, I'm writing this column. I want an impactful company. I was thinking he'd either send me somebody he knows or maybe a company he invested in. And Gigi sends me a company that he founded. And he introduces me to you. And we then, within, what, an hour, two hours, basically put the entire piece together. And I'm in love with what you're doing. In love it. In love, in love. Now... I met you this morning, and I'm in love with you too. You're amazing. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. Let's start back up. Slow downhill. I'm after two coffees and a Red Bull, so I need to (laughs) take it down a notch. All right, who are you? What's your name? Uh, My name is Orit Strauss Raz. Where do we even start with you? Let's start from the end. What are you building right now? We're building a company that would... uh... Can I interrupt you? Yes. I love the fact that I asked you, what are you building, and you said, we're building. That's the sign of a good entrepreneur. (laughs) Did you notice that? You did that by accident. No, but that's... Anybody who watches my vlog realizes there's a pattern here. The greater the entrepreneur the more humble they are. Right? I said, what are you building? And you answered, we're building. You didn't even notice that. It's amazing. Okay, go on. Yes. What are, you, what are we building? As in we're you and your team. Yes. <laughs> now, now it's we team. <laughs> okay, what are we, what are we building? Yes, talk to me. Uh, we're building a global marketplace that is um, really fixing one, uh, what we see as a, as a broken market, a broken industry, where you have millions of amazing nonprofit organizations on the ground, really grassroots level organizations doing amazing things in the world, um, mostly in developing countries. That's our focus. Uh, that find it very, very hard to connect with people that want to support them, people that want to help them, that want to volunteer, that want to donate. What's your Um, tagline? What's our tagline? Good people and good causes connecting. How open are you to considering changing it? (laughs) Very open. (laughs) What about scaling goodness? like that. I mean, what you're doing really is you're taking volunteers on the one hand, you're taking, you know, nonprofits and just organizations, institutions, whatever you want to call it in the developing world that need those volunteers so badly. It is the epitome of win-win. You are taking goodness and you are scaling it. You are democratizing. You're letting anyone volunteer from anywhere in the world, including travel, but also from the comfort of their own home. And you're bringing, you're doing this, you know, in theory to a, I mean, how many volunteers are there out there worldwide that want to bring their, you know, their, their A-game, their goodness to the world? How many? Do you have any idea? 
Well, I mean, you know, if you look at the volunteer travel market, it's a huge market in and of itself. I mean, they talk about 20 million people that travel the world each year. Just to volunteer. Yeah, but just to, but just traveling. I mean, when Amazing. you talk about volunteering from home, I mean, any person with a laptop and two right. two two hours a week and some good intentions amazing. can do amazing stuff to support. What's your website, first of uh, all? Givingway.com. Givingway without Not an A. giving away. There you go. Without an A, givingway.com. I just right. wrote about them on the J Post this past weekend. You could read that if you want, but go to givingway.com. I mean, it's just a sign-up process. As a volunteer, I could sign up, etc. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's interesting. When I go to the website, which I, I guess I should have done, but we did this so fast with this article, but when I go to the website, is it targeting the volunteers? Is it targeting the... Well, actually, both. It's, it's a thing. It, interesting. It's interesting because it's a marketplace. I mean, we have two two customers. I right. mean, we to target audiences. provide amazing services to the nonprofits right. to make their lives easier, but we also want to provide a great experience for volunteers. So it's really, it's very level. So let me just let me just simplify this for you in case you haven't gotten it. You know, even eBay is a marketplace. There's sellers, there's buyers. Very simple marketplace. In this case, Giving Way has a marketplace of people who want to do good on the one hand, anywhere in the world, and people who want to receive good on the other end of the world. And it's otherwise people that are, you know, or it's, I'd say nonprofits that are inaccessible. If I want to do good in Africa, I don't know where to start. So what will I do? I'll Google it and I'll quickly realize that it's a bunch of, I'm being nice here, agents that are charging me thousands of dollars to volunteer. And I'm like, what? I want to do good. Why are you charging me thousands of dollars? Here, it's a marketplace that if I'm some remote village in Africa that needs whatever I need, I'll just onboard onto this giving away platform and get access to, in theory, millions of volunteers. Yeah. It's just like, like, I mean, I, I know that brilliant, the word brilliant is maybe overused, but it's just kind of so brilliant, it's simplicity. Like, why hasn't, are there other marketplaces that are doing this? Not exactly the way we do it, and certainly not uh, not in the scale that we're doing it. No. It's unbelievable. So, you know, when I talk, we'll have many follow-up meetings, I'm sure, but when I talk to startups, I say, there aren't many rules that if you follow them, you'll become the next Google, but there are rules that if you don't follow them, you'll never become the next Google, and one of them is, what is your home run? You need a home run. If I'm an investor, and I'm coming, and I come to you, and I try to pitch you, or I'm the investor, you come to me, you try to pitch me, and I don't know that there's a home run, I don't feel what's called FOMO, fear of missing out, I'm not taking out my checkbook. I need to feel that there's a home run here. Home run can be an amazing product. Product. It can be an amazing team. It could be amazing investors. In your case, you have several home runs, I believe. You know, you. I, 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 that was true before I even met you. And you're another home run. But there's Giggy. There's an incredible market here. And at the end of the day, you know, the biggest home run to me is what the title of the J Post column was. You know, doing well by doing good. Right. At the end of the day, you're bringing tremendous impact into the world. You're doing incredible things for society. And when you help, you know, bring that much goodness into the world, money follows as it is. And you know, it's it's really truly an incredible company. I love. The meeting you and it's amazing what you're doing and you. goes without saying but I'm gonna say it anyway you know I like to, there's there's things that we say in the English language that are just like funny like no offense but right? <laughs> you know that when you say that you're about to offend someone right so it goes without saying but I'm gonna say it that anything I can do to help you win in any way shape or form especially or I should say well first and foremost because Gigi was involved but now that I know you because of you and because of what you're doing and just let me know how I can help in any way shape or form and consider it done I'm gonna run to my next meeting now but we're gonna put something on the calendar to meet ASAP and figure out how we scale this thing thank you so much thank you it's amazing to meet you and keep <laughs> doing you. keep doing amazing amazing work thank Thank you. I feel better. Bye-bye. <laughs> we both have colds. We're both fine. Anyway, yes. thanks. I'll catch you soon. We're going to take things off camera and talk next steps, all right? Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Once again, incredible, incredible people in this ecosystem. Heading to WeWork now to meet Efrat Fenningson, yet another incredible woman in the Israeli tech ecosystem doing wildly impressive things over her career. And I'm not sure what she's doing next, but I'm very, very excited to hear if the elevator ever comes. Here I am at... One of, I, I think this is... like I really love the vibe here, I have to say. This is... It's fun for me to come here. The whole world works here. It's, here we are in WeWork Serona, and I'm sitting with someone who I believe, you can close your ears and this is gonna embarrass you, but you're gonna have to get over it. What I believe and what I often say is one of the top marketers in this country. You can un, you can unplug your ears now. Efrat Fenixson, who, I don't know, how long do we know each other? Five years, I don't Five know. Years. So I think, is it fair to say that you led marketing at one of the fastest growing companies in Israel? Is that a fair statement? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Four years, 250 people, $110 million. Wow. Uh, so you were on the vlog before, we did a whole thing on aerobotics. We're not here to talk about aerobotics. Why? Because you recently left aerobotics. Yeah. Well, we can talk about them. I love them. Yeah, I know, but I want to talk about you. <laughs> yeah. I know you love aerobotics. Uh, we all love aerobotics. Super geeky. One of the geekiest companies in Israel. Amazing company. I miss them. Autonomous I'm see drones. Them tomorrow. Crazy, crazy stuff. But uh, you know, we, we did that already. Been there, done that. Who is a fraud, Fenningson? Give me your background. What's your story? Talk to me. Tell me something interesting. 
I studied computer science when I was 21. Not know that. You did not know that. I did that. not know that. Yeah, and I graduated from Monash University in Australia in Melbourne. Computer I knew, science. I knew there was a Melbourne. Thing. Were you yeah. born there? No, I was born in Israel. Israel. I moved to Australia when I was 21 with a group of friends. We studied at Sela College in Ramat Gan, and then okay. they had this exchange program with Monash at Super Melbourne. Interesting. So we went there and we graduated as a computer science uh, bachelor's degree, and wow. then uh, I worked in the gaming industry as a video games developer. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, actually, I think you Xbox, told me that last time, though. I feel like you Nintendo, told me that last time. all that stuff. Oh, that's super interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I built games. For three years, I was a programmer, and that was enough for me to know oh. that I'm not a programmer. Really? I mean, it's you like nice. it? I like it, but I'm not an introvert. I need people. That's true, but I don't have many regrets in life, I have to tell you. One of them that's is not, not learning how to code. I, I regret, ah, okay. I regret not learning well, how to code. Well, I still use it now, HTML, JavaScript. I, I wish I knew how to code. I really do. I love uh, it. My, my brain is like super marketing oriented now. I just can't even try. I tried once and I'm like, yes. Yeah, it's it's very useful for newsletters and websites. I, I, I would love to learn, but I, I can't even, my brain is doesn't, it's not wired that way anymore. But anyway, okay, go on, yeah. And then after being a developer, I wanted to go into business in high tech, but I didn't know how to make that transition. And I had no intention to go back to university to right. study business after right. I've done my degree. Right. So I decided to open my own small business. And I had a small business with my partner at the time for jewelry and accessories. And I had two physical shops in Melbourne. And I had an e-commerce shop on How eBay. am I learning all this about in you? In 2005, I had an e eBay store. It was so much fun. Wow. Yeah, yeah it was That's great wild. fun. That's awesome. I had that for two years. I also started designing jewelry. And I sold my own jewelry in the business as well. And then all after, going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After right. two years, in 2007, I decided I'm coming back to Israel. So I wrapped up everything, sold the business, came back to Israel, and started working for the Israel Export Institute. Okay. Was there for three years at the high tech division. That was my way back into high tech. Sure. Then Orca, a France telecom company in Ranana. So uh, I was there for five and a half years wow. doing B2B tech marketing. I started their marketing from scratch. They had nothing. You look way too young to have done all of this. I'm just saying. Like, you've yeah, done a lot. Well, I'm 30. Nine in a month. You've done like a whole. Like, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, I've mean, done a lot. Wow. Okay. So, uh, France Telecom, five and a half years, and then Aerobotics, three years almost. Okay. So, and you've, here done, I am. you've done incredible stuff. You know, let's just say you left Aerobotics as one of the top marketers in the country. It's a, just an objective fact, and the opportunities are pouring in because everyone wants. I'm, really, I'm being honest with you. I'm not like. Everyone needs a good marketer in this country, which yeah. leads us to our next point. Yeah. You know, we talked about this, and I think we're very aligned in, in yeah. the need. Or I would say, and I'm being diplomatic when I say the need, or the total lack of understanding of the need for good marketers. Yes. What, what, what do you think about you know the current? And let's let's be nice. Okay, we don't want to diss on anybody, yeah, but let's yeah, let's, yeah. let's 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 just speak openly here. What what is the current affairs in terms of the marketing landscape in Israel? And how you envision right. uh, Israeli companies and their understanding of the importance of marketing? Right. So I think there's such a fixation about Israel being the startup nation because of the technology, right. and not enough Israel being a startup nation because of the marketing and the commercialization skills that we've. Got. And there are some good marketeers in Israel. In fact, I'm a member, I'm part of the GCMO Global CMO Forum, about 40 CMOs of global companies in Israel. We have a great marketing pool in Israel, marketing talent. What we don't have is a good understanding of what marketing can give to a business very early on, how you build the foundations to scale going forward. Strategic marketing. Strategic marketing. And then you hear all the time, nine out of 10 startups fail. And every Everyone saying, yeah, it's bad management. Yeah, no funding. Yeah, this, that. But the reason, the I see that the one of the reasons that marketing fail, is, uh, sorry, startups fail, is because of marketing. Or lack and thereof. Lack thereof. A lack of strategic thinking about the business. And I always preach to that. And I speak to a lot of investors right now. I speak to a lot of founders. They tell me how much they need marketing, but on a small scale, just to patch something, you know. Andy's. Yeah, I've got Andy's. sales. I've got uh, inbound pouring in. I just need some to be there to do PR and some events, you know, and it's wow. pissing me off. My heart. Because if you start with a good strategic marketing uh, leadership from very early on, you build a foundation for growth and scale of the company. 100%. You know how to handle lead generation, inside sales, you know how to handle content strategy, you know how to build your own brand and reputation. And if you don't do that from very early on, and you come late and you do that later, then and you just patch you, something you up. Like keep repairing. Yeah, then you pair, you repair, repair, and Ridiculous. you don't have good skills and good.
good foundations in place. Right, right. No. So I think that the understanding that you need marketing just like you need a good developer very early on, you need marketing very early on. 100%. Um, That's a really good analogy. It's a actually. good insight I'm getting from the last weeks. From That's all a really the important point because take development, right? If I take a mediocre developer to try to save money, cut corners, I will end up spending more later on to patch the code. And, <laughs> and people now get that, right? right? They do. Right. In development, people get in that. When it comes to marketing, it's like, oh, let's just, you know, we need a little, you know what words? Oh my God. Like, when I hear these words, I want to like punch the per. I need to generate buzz. Yeah. Oh my God, shoot me now. Like, I how need, about frame I need your traffic and leads? Oh my God, like, you know, in this country, and, and I don't mean to this, I love Israeli tech, as you guys know, but like, marketing and sales are not the same thing. Marketing is not glorified sales. Let's yes. not mix those two things up. No. And I, I think, fundamentally speaking, like, a lot of founders do not understand that those things are totally different. They, they're complementary. Yes. They work together. For sure, but they're, they're different. They could be the best team. 100%. Ever. Okay, here's my last question for you. Okay. If someone's watching this and yes. they say, if Rob is a rock star. She's a powerhouse, and they want to pick your brain. Uh huh. Buy you coffee. I don't want people to buy me okay, coffee. Okay, you're too busy. Enough if somebody wants to shoot you an email, just ask you a question, a professional okay. question. Okay, okay. What's the best way to reach out to you? LinkedIn. You don't have to give me your email. LinkedIn. LinkedIn is by far. Efrat Fenningsen. E F R A T. I think that I'm one of the first people in Israel to have LinkedIn, so my LinkedIn is, you know, linkedincom slash Efrat. Oh wow. That's, That's awesome. it. Okay, so linkedincom slash Efrat. Joseph put her thing right there. Just <laughs> hit her up on. You can shoot her. By the way, general lesson: when you send her an invitation. Don't just send her a cold invitation. Just she has say no contact. What you want. Say, I saw you on the vlog, or um, I wanted to ask you a question about X, Y, and Z. And yeah. you know, be courteous and polite and professional. Obviously, don't bombard. But listen, at the end of the day, like I said, I'm a big fan, and it's unbelievable what you've done. And you know, I'm sure Thank I can you. learn a ton from you. We should do this more no, often. No, I learn a ton from you. I, I'm I'm extremely excited to hear what's next for Frat Phoenix Sun. <laughs> Me too. Um, and uh, yeah, stay tuned. Whatever I can do to help you win in any way, shape, or form. I don't know if that's even possible, but if there's anything I can do to help you, close with that saying, let me know, and uh, just keep kicking butt. Okay. Love it, thanks. Welcome to winter in Tel Aviv. Look at this, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs>